What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Paulo Costa versus Kamaru Usman next. Although Paulo Costa came up short in his UFC 298 scrap against Robert Whittaker, the former title challenger is eager to return to the win column after a long period of inactivity prior to the fight. While speaking on a recent episode of Submission Radio, Costa named Kamaru Usman as an opponent he'd like to face when he returns to action. I think, yeah, I think he, he came from, from lost as well. I came from lost. So, uh, yes, everybody, uh, me and him need to put a win in the, in the, in the hair courts. I think um, he did uh, already everything, everything that he showed him, uh, everything that he showed to, to do and where the weight. So I think it's time. He's not so young as well. He like 37, 36, I don't know, something like around that. So I think it's time to, to, to him move to middleweight. He did once against Shimaev, you know, go make a chain, but was not was not in the, in the whole process. Like uh, he got just he just got a short note and came up uh, to middleweight, waiting like where the weight. So I think this fight makes sense. So far, Usman has yet to weigh in on the situation and has given little indication as to whether or not he plans to stay at middleweight or drop down to welterweight. However, as Costa indicated, he believes that the former welterweight kingpin should remain at middleweight, following the majority decision loss to Chimaev. Next up, let's take a look at Dana White receives offer for Sean O'Malley. Although Sean O'Malley is currently gearing up for his highly anticipated rematch with Chito Vera at UFC 299, the bantamweight champ has also been tied to a fight with Ilya Topuria and a fight with Marab Devashvili. While everything starts with successfully defending his title on March 9th, O'Malley has recently been involved in a back and forth with boxer Ryan Garcia, who took aim at the champ during a recent episode of the MMA Hour, where he went so far as to offer to join the UFC in pursuit of a fight with O'Malley. I'll be his in MMA, guaranteed. Yeah, I'm a natural. You don't understand. I'm a natural yeah. wrestler. I just beat my security that's a wrestler. I beat him. I'm strong and I got crazy conditioning. That's already been done. Yeah. I know I'm going to knock him out in boxing. That's not even fair. What is fair is to test myself in MMA because I know if I put my mind to it and I trained every day and I had Nate helping me, even Alex Pereira, all of them, and I really locked in, he will not beat me. I will come with everything I have and I will destroy Sean O'Malley in the UFC. Oscar De La Hoya, who was also in studio for the recent episode of the MMA Hour, weighed in on the situation, saying that he would be open to co-promoting the bout with the UFC while making Dana White an interesting offer. It would be a gigantic fight. Could this happen? It'll be a hell of a promotion. I would actually entertain that because Ryan can fight you know, in the main event with this kid and maybe I can do Dana <laughs> on the co-main. Although there's plenty of bad blood between De La Hoya and White, the odds of the UFC CEO stepping into the octagon to compete against the legendary boxer seem incredibly slim. Next up, let's take a look at Gilbert Burns disrespects Bilal Muhammad. The news that Bilal Muhammad was not one of the three fights offered to Leon Edwards for UFC 300 came as a shock to many fans. Given Muhammad's win streak, it appears as though, based on his resume, he should be next in line for a crack at the welterweight title. According to Muhammad's most recent opponent, Gilbert Burns, that isn't the case. He spoke on an interview with Middle Easy, where he indicated that Muhammad should be next in line, and had he not injured his shoulder when the two fought, things may have played out differently. No, and I just knew, like, he, he just, a, a friend of mine just called me and said, hey, I know, I am, I don't, I know you know this, but just to let you know, if you didn't get hurt on your injury, and I ate it already happened, I'm not giving no excuse. But it is what it is, you know, I know it's a show, I know UFC gotta put the best fights, and I, I don't think, honestly, Bilal Muhammad deserves to fight for the title, but honestly, I'm not intrigued. Muhammad was quick to fire back on social media, posting a series of tweets taking aim at Burns, writing, This bum has done nothing, but cry since losing I took the fight off the couch because I knew you suck and it would be easy. When addressing the injury in their fight, Muhammad wrote, Because I dropped him with a jab in the first round, and he couldn't strike with me, so he tried to shoot, but he sucks, and I'm way stronger than him, and broke his shoulder with my hip. As Muhammad concluded, referencing Brian Ortega's win over Yair Rodriguez this past weekend, Fighters get hurt in fights. Brian Ortega literally twisted his ankle before the fight and still won, only difference is Burns just sucks. 
With a chance to return to the win column at UFC 299, it'll be interesting to see how the layoff following his fight with Bilal Muhammad affects Gilbert Burns. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at UFC fight updates. After a thrilling card in Mexico City this past weekend, let's look at today's UFC fight updates, starting with an update to the rescheduled Raul Rosas Jr. vs. Ricky Tercios fight. The two were set to compete this past weekend, before Rosas Jr. was forced out of the fight with an illness shortly before the two were scheduled to walk out. Although reports indicated that the pair were scheduled to fight, Tercios revealed on Instagram that wasn't the case, writing that no contract has been signed for a new date. Regarding the report, Tercios wrote, in part, fake news, no fight contract has been signed yet for a new date. Last night, Roses Jr. said no fight literally five minutes before the walkout to fight in the octagon. Roses Jr. said no to facing me in the octagon in front of his 20,000 Mexican fans in Mexico City. Roses Jr. disrespected the Bushido code, very unprofessional. Reports have also indicated that the UFC Vegas 87 card this weekend will feature a short-notice replacement with Joel Alvarez out of his scheduled fight with Ludovic Klein. Instead, AJ Cunningham will be stepping in on short notice in hopes of making his successful UFC debut. A new fight between Gene Matsumoto and Dan Argueta has also been added to the upcoming April 6 card in Las Vegas. The bantamweight clash will see Matsumoto look to extend his unbeaten streak, while Dan Argueta will be looking to return to the win column after back-to-back -back no contests, the most recent of which was overturned. Last but certainly not least, Nate Diaz indicated that after missing out on UFC 300, he's eager to headline the September Noche UFC event at The Sphere, which was recently confirmed as a pay-per-view card, writing, I'll be here. 300. All right, fight fans, I know a lot of you don't just watch the sport, and if you train like me, I have something for you that'll make eating better every day so much easier. Today's video is brought to you by Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. To be honest, I really don't enjoy grocery shopping much. Outside of work and training, I really don't have a lot of time left over. So, Factor has simplified my life in a way I never thought was possible. They update their menus every week, and with over 35 different options and 55 add-ons, they have a ton of choices that I think anyone could enjoy. Most of their meals heat up in two minutes, so you can fuel up fast and provide for your mind and body without the hustle. I've also done the math, and these meals can be a lot less expensive than takeout. I'm telling you, this is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. Head over to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code MMAZONE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. You'll get two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. That's promo code MMAZONE50 for 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Make your life easy now. Next, let's take a look at Ilya Topuria sends warning to Islam Makachev. Ilya Topuria recently fell victim to a fake quote from Islam Makachev that had been circling the MMA community, which called him a quote, small boy. The post caught the attention of Ilya Topuria, who took to Instagram, sharing a clip of the lightweight champ being knocked out by Adriano Martins back in 2015. According to translations, the message Topuria included, along with the video reads, the boy is cutting you off. Since winning the title, Topuria has been catapulted into international superstardom recently being honored by Real Madrid at their match on Sunday. Following his defeat of Volkanovski, Topuria has notably called out a number of opponents, from Islam Makachev all the way to Conor McGregor. While it's remained unclear who will get the first crack at Topuria's title, many seem to be of the mindset that if Max Holloway defeats Justin Gaethje at UFC 300, he could be first up for the newly crowned champ. Of course, as Dana White indicated following UFC 298, the UFC will be headed to Spain, which could serve as the location for Topuria's first title defense. Next, let's take a look at Henry Cejudo reveals next UFC fight. Following his recent announcement indicating that he would not be retiring after his loss to Marab Devashvili, Henry Cejudo has called his shot. Speaking in a video for his YouTube channel, released after the UFC Fight Night Mexico City card, Triple C suggested that he and former flyweight champion Brandon Moreno throw down at the previously mentioned Noche UFC 306 pay-per-view card in September at the Vegas Sphere. So what fight wouldn't it be better than, than the Triple C, Brandon Moreno, the Mexican-American versus the true Mexican, and they come together and they do a five round showdown at the Sphere in Las Vegas for Mexican Independence Day. I like it. I think there's any way that we should settle it and enough talk and enough cringe and enough antics and enough all of that. The only way to get it on, Brandon Moreno, is I accept your challenge. 
Let's do it Mexican Independence Day, which you got. You sign that contract. Are you a Mexican or a Mexican? Cejudo and Moreno have a long and storied history with one another. Moreno joined Cejudo's team prior to Triple C's first fight with Demetrius Johnson back in 2016, and the two established a good relationship. However, when Cejudo then coached the Ultimate Fighter season 24, Moreno landed on Joseph Benavidez's team, opposite Cejudo. Moreno then helped Benavidez train for his 2016 fight with Henry Cejudo, taking the bad blood to another level. With the latest call out, however, the pair could have the chance to finally settle their differences. Next, let's take a look at Mike Perry goes off on Dana White and UFC. Since parting ways with the UFC, Mike Perry has gone 4-0 in bare-knuckle boxing, defeating a number of MMA veterans such as Michael Venom Page, Luke Rockhold, and most recently, Eddie Alvarez. Speaking on a recent episode of the Overdogs podcast, recorded following Marab Devashvili's UFC 298 win over Henry Cejudo, which sparked praise from Dana White, Perry took aim at the UFC after the sudden change in tune from White, who had previously been frustrated with Devashvili and Aljamain Sterling's refusal to fight one another in the past. I, I heard Dana be like, like, yeah, because, you know, he wouldn't fight his friend. You know how much we love that here. And I was right. like, was that was that sarcasm or was he of serious? Course it was. But I thought sometimes they do f on people who are like, oh, my God, let's put him on a pedestal because he was doing the right thing and he won't fight his friend. But this guy over here is doing the same f thing we're going to be mad at because why? They f can pick and choose whoever the f they want, whenever the f they want. They do whatever the f they want and no one can tell them anything about it. But that's where it's f***ing annoying and it, I lose interest. While Perry may not be happy with the UFC, BKFC president David Feldman recently had a meeting with White that went well. And although the combat sports community has not been made privy to what was discussed in the meeting, Feldman notably indicated that he was, quote, creating an ally with the UFC boss. Dana White receives bad news on UFC lawsuit. The lawsuit trial is set for April 15th, but after new updates to the case, the UFC and the 1,200 plus fighters are agreeing to engage in a private mediation. This means that the UFC doesn't want this case to go to trial and lose up to $1.6 billion. Instead, they want to come to an agreement and settle the lawsuit. The UFC will most likely still lose close to a billion dollars from the settlement, but if they come to this agreement, it will be less than going to trial. Israel Adesanya reveals he was asked to face Drakus Duplessis at UFC 300. Izzy claims he was ready for the fight at 300, but DDP declined due to injury from the bout against Sean Strickland. Here's what Adesanya had to say on the Theo Vaughn podcast. But they summoned me. They summoned me for 300, and I was like, yep, let's roll. But their side didn't want it. So I was like, well, and I'm just going to keep. Who, DDP side? Yeah, they didn't want it. Wow. But, I, I, you know, they just fought Strickland. So maybe he had a little bit of niggly injuries and stuff. But, hey, we all we all got little, you know, nigg niggles and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, but I've, I've fought injured for the last how many fights. So that's why I took time off, just to let my body heal. And it has healed. And, yeah, um, I'm sure there'll be more injuries. It just happens through training. Top comments. To be honest, I couldn't care less about Conor McGregor in the octagon. I'm not believing anything about Conor until he's actually in the ring. These boxers don't understand that MMA is a whole different world. It's like trying to run without feet. You have legs, but no feet to actually run. Who's asking for Conor versus Nate? At least Conor versus Chandler makes sense because of tough. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.